Welcome back, everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk about transducers. If you aren't familiar with composition, with map, filter, reduce, with data structures and data transformation in general, I really don't recommend this video. You probably want to brush up on some of the other content I have on my channel before diving into this sort of thing. If you are okay with being confused and you don't feel like you have the prerequisites, you're welcome to, just you've been, you've been warned. Uh, we're going to start by looking at why we want transducers. In other words, what problem they solve, and then we'll dive into what they actually are. And that's going to take some steps to get there, but hopefully by the end of the video, you understand transducers and see why they could be useful. Now, this is primarily all code that is already written. I wrote quite a lot of code, it's heavily commented, and I recommend that you either grab this code after the video or you grab it ahead of time and just follow along. Uh, this hopefully will be a lot clearer if I explain the code as we go through it, but the comments will be there to refresh your memory later. You can get the code at the at a link in the description box below. As far as an exploration of what we actually have, we have our main run.js and that's where we're going to spend all of our time. I've only left this open so I can show you fp.js with literally just a couple things in it. We have compose, which is just my own quick version of compose so that you don't have to in, uh, import a library and you can just see what it does. And concat. Now concat is just a function version of the concat method, which exists on the array object. That's really all you need to know is that using concat as a function is going to be far friendlier syntactically to the problems that we're trying to solve than using it as a method. So that's why we're doing that. Anyway, I will go back to run and I will close that. So we are importing those two functions like I just showed you and then, excuse me, we are initializing our input data. So we pretty much will be using nums this entire time. Anyone who watches my videos will be familiar with the nums array. Nothing special, just all the numbers 1 to 10. And I like to use it because numbers are very uh, clear and easy to understand, but they can also be great for examples. And then we have some basic transformations and some predicates. Nothing crazy so far. So if we do something like a series of maps, we can take nums and we can map ag1, 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 and then double it. And then the result will be that we have a new list of numbers that have been added, that have been incremented five times and then doubled. So that get, we're assigning that to map result one, and then down here we have map result two. Map result two is the result of composing add one, add one, add one, add one, add one, double it, and then passing that single transformation into map. And so as we can see, if we look at these two outputs, they are exactly the same. And that's because we can compose all of these functions together and then pass them, because they have the same behavior, they're all transformations, into a single map call. And so that gives us a benefit. Each of these creates an intermediary data structure. So after we add one, we have a new array of length 10 that instead of going from one to 10, goes from two to 11. And then we go from 3 to 12, and 4 to 13, and so on and so on. And every single time we're creating that new data structure just so that we can call dot map on it. It's not super efficient. Whereas down here, we can compose all of those transformations into a single function, so a single transformation, and just call map once, which means we only have to iterate over that array one time. So that's more efficient. We can do the same sort of thing with filter. So if we want to create, excuse me, <clears throat> if we want to create a filter system that will filter out every number, then we can just call filter is even and filter is odd. So that'll just exclude everything. And our predicates, again, are just these guys up here, which we have is even and then is odd is just the inverse of is even. And so that gives us filter result one. And exclude all is just the composition of is even and is odd. So if a number is even and is odd, which will never be true, it's just false, 
then it will be return, that predicate will return true, and we can compose those two together, create an excludes all transformation, pass those together into one filter, and then call that on dot nums, or sorry, I call dot filter on nums, and then that again is more efficient than having to filter the same array twice, which is what's happening up here. We filter the array, whatever is left after is even, which will be all the even numbers, is passed to is odd, none of those even numbers will be odd, so none are returned. We just get an empty array. And obviously, when we compare those two things, we get two empty arrays, exactly as we would expect. Now, if we take a look at something like this, we have result one is going to be map, filter, and reduce chained together. So we have something like nums, which is one to 10, and then we map over it to add one, we filter it to get all the evens, and then we reduce it with add, so we get the sum of all these numbers that are left after adding one and filtering them. And what we would like to be able to do is something like transform filter reduce, where we compose those transformations, filterings, so in other words, the transformation, the predicate, and the reduction, or the reducing function, all together, and then apply them in one step so that we don't have these intermediary structures because we don't need this list of one to, or we don't need this list of two to 11 and we don't need this list of two to 10. We really just want to take all the numbers that are, that have, added, have one added to them are even, and then just add those together. So we want to be able to jump from step one to 30 so that we have a list and then we have the number 30 with no intermediary data in between. But, if we try to compose that, we end up with some weird things because add one is a transformation. And so if we add one to a list that's f with map, that's fine. But if we call is even on all those numbers with map, that's just going to convert them all into Booleans. And then when you try to add Booleans together, you just get weird stuff because that will try to coerce them into numbers and then we, we don't really know what's going to happen. I believe you just get a bunch of NANDs. Yeah, so we just have a list of NANDs. Whereas obviously what we want is that number 30, which was the result one. So what happens if we were to do instead with filter? Well, we're going to filter add one, which means that every result, which is just going to be an increment number, is going to be turned into a Boolean. And then we're gonna check if that Boolean is even, which doesn't really make sense. And then we're gonna add those is even Booleans together and Again, that doesn't make sense. And likewise, if we try to do reduce, then we try to add with ag1 with reduce. Ag1 only takes one thing, but reduce is expecting an accumulator and a value. And then we try to call is even on whatever the result of that is. And again, you just get some strange outputs. You just get NAND. So I mean, we're closer. It's not a list anymore, but it still doesn't make any sense because not a number is a number that's not a number. So it's not what we want. What we need to be able to do then is give context to each of these. So if you look down here, we're looking for something like this. We want to be able to do a transformation that is a filter and a reduce, or well, yes. We, we want to do some sort of step, single step, some sort of composition that is a transformation, a filter, and a reduce. And so if we look at this, we need to be able to provide that context to our transformation function, to our predicate function, and to our reducing function by saying, this is a transformation function, so treat it as such. This is a filter function, so in other words, a predicate. Treat it as a predicate. And this is a reducing function, so treat it as a reducing function. And then if we compose those all together, be able to pass that a new data structure, in this case nums, so the array of one to 10, and have it return a single value, which will be all of those numbers incremented the remaining one, the ones that remain after being checked if they're even, added together. So that's the goal. That's what we want to be able to do. Remove all the intermediary data structures and create a single result by composing, or a single transformation of sorts by tr composing all these different types together. Now, when we were up here, we noted that we needed to call, we couldn't call map because filter and reduce were slightly different. We couldn't call reduce, or we couldn't call filter because map and reduce were slightly different. But what if we could create a 
single uh, function signature, let's say, that would allow us to always use reduce so that we could map with reduce and we could filter with reduce and then we could obviously reduce with reduce. That would make it so we could hypothetically compose these together. And so as you've been able to see for a while now, I have a map with reduce right here. So map with reduce takes a data structure, in this case that list, xs, and then a function, which will be our transformation function. And it just calls reduce on that transform or on that data structure, so that list, and then just calls concat with the transformed value. So remember this is going to be add one going to add one to that number and then just concatenate it with the list. And so the result of this is that a empty list is passed in first, that first value is received as val, it's transformed so it's gone from one to two, and then it's added to that empty list so now we have a list of two, like the number two. And then number two is passed in, the next value is received, and we transform the two into a three and then we have a list of two, three, and that con continues on just like map would work, except we've used reduce. And so if we look down here at map with reduce result one, we take nums, we add one, and the result is two to 11, just like we would expect. But it would be nice if we could extract the reduce part out of there so that we can call reduce like we're used to doing. So if you notice, all I've done here is I've pulled out the excess.reduce call and just returned the reducing function itself. So the accumulator value part. And so when we return the accumulator value part, that can be passed to excess.reduce, which means that we can call nums.reduce and pass in map with reduce two with ag one and the initial value and get the exact same result as we did above. And there we go. So now we have a map function that can be passed to reduce instead of being passed to map. So that's handy. That gives us some context for how to, how to treat an ag1, so a transformation. So we can say this is a transformation. I want you to treat it like a transformation even though we're passing it to reduce. So let's comment these back out and move on to the next step, which is going to be filtering with reduce. Same idea. So I'm not going to belabor the point too much. You start by creating filter with reduce one, which internally calls x excess.reduce, so array.reduce, and applies a predicate to the value. So basically just checks if the value is truthy when the predicate is applied. And if it is, adds it to the array. Otherwise, it just returns the array as it was. So in other words, if we passed in an is even as our predicate, and the initial value is the empty array, then it's going to receive a one. It's going to check if the one is even. It will not be, so we just return at the end here, the empty array. Then we have an empty array again. Check if two is even, it is, so it gets concatenated into the array, and now we have an array with the value two. And so on and so on, it behaves exactly like filter normally would. Same thing with filter with reduce two, except we've extracted out the dot reduce, just like we did above with map. And that gives us context to say is aug is a predicate, treat it as such, and we signal that with filter is with reduce, but we can pass it to reduce and it'll treat it like a predicate. And so when we run this, we should only have odd numbers. And there we go. All the numbers one to 10 that are odd. So that should hopefully Makes sense so far, nothing too crazy. We now have map filter and reduce that can all be called, or we have transformations, we have uh, predicates, and we have reducing functions that can all be passed to reduce. Obviously reducing functions can be passed to reduce directly, but maps or transformations need to be passed with map with reduce too, and filter or predicates need to be passed with filter with reduce two. So we have a commonality between these things. The two functions both use concat. It's just the wrapping around it that distinguishes how they need to be, how that concatenation should occur. 
So in map, or map with reduce, we are applying a transformation and then concatenate, concatenating, whereas filter with reduce, we are applying a predicate to check if we should concatenate that value. But the essence of concatenating is just combining or reducing two things into one. And that's going to be really important coming up. So as I mentioned, the only difference if we extract out that joining or combining that concatenating, we have an essence of mapping and we have an essence of reducing. Or sorry, essence of filtering. So let me just put everything in the screen here. So for mapping, we keep that essence. That essence is this part right here. Applying a transformation to a value is the essence of mapping. And what we've done here is we've parameterized it so that we're no longer passing in, or we're no longer calling concat. We've wrapped it so we can partially apply the function with a transformation and then give it a reducing function. We can just feed it concat and then this function will behave exactly the same way. So if we were to replace RF with concat, this would be the exact same function as above, except that we pass in concat instead of it already being in there. And as you can see, I said, this takes two functions, makes them one. In other words, this is a reducing function. Right? Accumulator value returns a single new value. And so if we pass in a reducing function, in other words, concat, then we partially apply mapping first with our transformation, right? And that's going to be returning this function here, which expects a reducing function. So map with RF is expecting a reducing function. We give it concat. That tells it how to put values back into the array. And then we can just call reduce on that with nums. That means numbers will be one at a time passed into map with RF, which knows how to transform them with ag1 and knows how to put them back into the list with concat. And so if I run this, then we get the same results still. We still get the, all the numbers incremented by one. So we generalize the mapping concept. Let me change this to say filtering. We generalize the filtering concept without using concat. Same thing, replace concat with RF. The essence of filtering is this outer part. We check a predicate and then we apply the concat or the reducing if the predicate is true. Otherwise, we just return the accumulator as it was. So otherwise, it's exactly the same as mapping. The rest of it is all the same. It's really just applying a predicate and conditionally reducing or applying a transformation and always reducing. That's the difference between our mapping and filtering. And if we check our filtering result, then this should give us all of the odd numbers because we are passing our predicate is odd to filtering. That returns a function that's waiting for a reducing function. Our reducing function will be concat that tells it how to put the number back into the list if the predicate holds true. And it will receiving, be receiving values from the nums array. So let me run that. And there we go. We have all of the odd numbers from 1 to 10. Comment that back out. So here's a bit of our explanation. This is where things get serious as far as understanding transducers. A reducing function takes two things and makes them into one thing. Mapping fn returns a function expecting a reducing function. Filtering with a predicate returns a function expecting a reducing function. Mapping with a transformation and then a reducing function returns a reducing function. Filtering with a predicate and, a reducing, and then a reducing function returns a reducing function. In other words, mapping with a transformation can receive as its reducing function the returned reducing function from filtering with a predicate and that has been given a reducing function and vice versa. These mapping and filtering when given their initial values 
are transducers. In other words, filtering with RF is a transducer. A transducer is something that expects a reducing function and returns a reducing function. And because the input signature is the same as the output signature, they can be composed together. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. That's the massive leap, right? So filtering itself is not a transducer. Giving it a predicate makes it, it returns a transducer. So this inner part, this, this is the returned transducer from filtering. Likewise with mapping, giving it a transformation returns a transducer, a function that expects a reducing function and then returns a reducing function. And because it expects a reducing function and returns a reducing function, they can be composed together, which allows us to try to achieve our goal. So remember, this was our goal. We wanted something roughly like this. We want to be able to map, filter, and reduce and compose everything together. I've written it the opposite way to how you would think because that's actually how this works. Because of the way that we have partial application occurring, even though it looks like we'd be doing the reduction first, we're actually, oh, excuse me, we're actually partially applying or composing together as, as essentially map, filter, and reduce, and then creating a stack of these transformations and reductions and doing them seemingly in the opposite order. So because we have to provide them each with these contexts where we say treat is even like a filter or like a predicate and treat ag1 like a transformation, it ends up being sort of a double stacked comp composition thing where it ends up being backwards, essentially. <laughs> uh, Rich Hickey has a really interesting talk about it. I'll link that in the description. It's a bit tough to explain and I, I don't think it's really required just know that it looks like it's a pipe, but it's really, you do really want to use Compose. You want to write it seemingly backwards. So that means that we can do a transform filter reduce. Remember we created transform filter reduce one above and it was broken, but we can create transform filter reduce two by creating, by passing filter is even and map is uh, ag1, and then passing our transform filter reduce some sort of reducing function. So remember we were using concat, that is our reducing function. Recat returns an, cat, concat returns an array, so we need to provide it with an initial value. Remember this is a reduce up here. So this is going to be our reducing function. So in other words, to make this clear, transform filter reduce to is a transducer, which means that it's expecting a reducing function, which will be concat, and it will return a reducing function, which we're going to pass to reduce, which is going to feed it numbers, so values, out of the nums array. And we need to seed it with an initial, this reduce here, we need to seed with an initial value, which because we are concatenating, onto a list needs to be an empty list. Okay. So as I note in the comments here, the output is even numbers. So the filtering was applied second. If I run this, we get exactly what I show in the comment, two, four, six, eight, 10, which means that the filtering was occurring after we added one. Otherwise it would be filtering, giving all the even numbers to add one and then they will all be odd. So we know that it's happening in the seemingly backwards order. And again, you can sort of dig into why that happens uh, if it doesn't make sense to you right now on your own time or in a separate video if that seems like a necessary thing for me to cover. Now, transform, filter, reduce, result two. These are very verbose names, but um, didn't want to, I guess, run into discrepancies <laughs> in, in the different uh, names I gave everything. So now we're creating a new value, which will be nums.reduce. And instead of passing in concat, which was our reducing function up here, we're going to pass in add. Remember, add is also a reducing function. It takes two things and makes them into one. 
But because add returns a number, whereas concat returned an array, add returns a number, so we need to use the, the value that returns, the value that doesn't change the input. That's what we need to give it. So if you give any number to add along with zero, it just gives you back that other number. So five plus zero is still five, so we need to give it that initial value. And now, if we use that same transformation, that same transducer from above, but instead of giving it concat, we give it add, and we seed it with the initial value that we want to use for addition, then we can get the sum of all of the even numbers after they were, or sorry, the sum of all the even numbers after they were added, after one was added to them. So it takes one through 10, at, increments them all by one, takes the remaining even numbers, adds them together, and you get 30. So two plus four plus six plus eight plus 10 gives you 30. And so what we can do, because this is sort of clunky, we can wrap everything up in a transducer helper, which is the sort of thing you'll see in a library. Also, when mentioning external libraries, that's how you'll want to use transducers. None of the stuff I've written here is very optimized. For example, I'm using concat consistently, which is going to be very slow compared to something like push or something else that mutates data. I'm using concat because I think it's far clearer, but uh, you'll want to use whatever's, whatever library provides an optimized solution for you. So you won't write your own transduce function. But this is what it does. Create a transduce function. It's going to take some sort of transformation. This is called X form. If you see a lot of closure examples, that's how they'll describe it, X form. A reducing function, so that'll be, as we've seen, concat or add. An initial value for whatever that reducing function is. And then the data you're going to operate on. And then it'll just call reduce on the data that was passed in. And then it'll partially apply that transformation with the reducing function that, in other words, this is the transducer, and seed the reduction with an initial value. So the same thing we did up here, except we wrap it in a function so that it's easier to work with. And that allows us to do something like transduce, transform, filter, reduce to, the same thing we used on line 141, Give it add, give it zero, give it nums, and that'll give us the exact same value, uh, which should be 30, I think. Yes, still 30. So that still works. This is the exact same logic, except wrapped in a helper function called transduce. So now we can do something like create this X form, which will be the composition of all these transducers. And just a reminder here that composition of transducers returns a new transducer. So just like a composition of functions returns a new function. A composition of transducers returns a new transducer, which means that X form is a transducer because these are all transducers. And you could create multiple X forms that would compose together and create a new transducer. And so this gives us a, the opportunity to do something like transduce with that transformation passed in or that transducer passed in. We'll pass it concat, which means that we want to pass it a empty array, and then the value that we want, or the numbers that we want to operate on, and we get those values. So values that uh, were transformed with this X form function. And I will comment that back out so that I don't keep seeing the 30 and comment that back out. Now, this is the next leap in logic for transducers. So the primary benefit we were addressing here is this allows us to compose different types of things. So if we want to do transformations and we want to do filtering, it allows us to compose them together and then we can feed that a reducing function, whether it be a concatenation to maintain the shape of that initial array. So we give it an array, it gives us back an array after using the maps and filters, or we give it a transformation or a reducing function like add, which will actually change the type from a list into a single value. 
That's what we were trying to solve. Remove those intermediary data structures and compose those things together. But this gives us one more benefit that's a little sneakier and it's pretty cool. Because we provide concat, so in other words, the, the function for putting things back into the, into the data structure, and we provide it with the initial data structure, we can use this transformation, this transducer, X form, on any data structure that has the same data type that these transformations and exclusions, so filters and mappings, are expecting. So if we have a tree that has numbers in it, if we have uh, a stream that has numbers in it, anything, we can still use this same transducer as long as we tell it how to put the data, which is what concat does, back into the data structure and we give it that initial data structure. So I have an amazingly uh, terrible example down here. I also have a bunch of notes. I should probably explain the notes. So let me just see here. This is what I just explained. Uh, this decouples the transformation from the data structure. I'm going to change that from transformation to transduction. Transduction. Uh, yeah, this is just some more detail on the stuff I just said. Mapping and filtering doesn't know about array, don't know about arrays. Uh, they just know about the essence of mapping and the essence of filtering. So transduce works on any data structure that has that has an implementation of reduce and an implementation of concat. In the closure examples that you'll see online, concat is called conj because that is what closure uses to join sequences and other data structures together. But I'm using concat because that's what JavaScript gives us. So I have this super lame example of implementing reduce uh, on another data structure. And it's super lame because all I'm doing is borrowing reduce. But I'm creating this new data structure that holds a array at the value property of an object. That might make a bit more sense in a minute, but just to show you, it would be something like value and then a list like this, right? That's essentially what we're making. And we can't just call reduce on this. I can't just do this dot reduce because that doesn't make any sense. So I have to write a reduce function for this and I'm writing that reduce function by just saying, instead of calling it out here, just call reduce on that array directly because JavaScript comes with a reduce array or a reduce method on the array. In reality, you would implement a smarter version of reduce, but this will do just fine because it illustrates the purpose. We also have to provide it with a concat. This just says how to add values into that array that's on the value property on the object and then returns it. And data structure dot of is for creating the initial value. So in a true implementation of a transducer, you're able to call the, trans, the reducing function or the data structure and get back an initial value. So if you think of like the plus binary operator, so addition, it called with no arguments will return zero in scheme and multiplication called with no arguments returns a one. So those, those base values. I've just created data structure dot of to essentially return the empty data structure. So this would be like an empty array. So array dot of or whatever. And so we're just going to use that with a bunch of values to actually create the initial data structure populated with the range of values from one to 10. And this just shows you how that works. So if we take new nums, which will be a list of one to 10 in that new data structure, and then we call reduce and we, see, we seed it with zero and give it add, that's going to give us the sum of all those numbers. And if we map with reduce two, so give it a transducer, feed it, or not a transducer, sorry, give that a context for how to treat add one, and then seed it with that initial value, then we get the results thereof. So we get 55, the sum of one to 10, and we get that data structure. So that's what the data structure looks like under the covers. It's just an object with a reduce, a concat, and an of, and then the value is the array that we gave it, except transformed, incremented by one. 
So those aren't super exciting. That's just if you're struggling to understand how this works, this is just a place to play around with that data structure. Okay, so now let's check out how this works if we wanted to use that existing X form, which was our transducer, on this new data structure. So we can give it the transformation. We give it add, which we've been using all along, or sorry, the transducer. We give it add, which we've been using as a reducing function all along. And we give it zero to seed adds initial value. And we give it new nums. So instead of giving it the list of nums, we give it this new nums, which is the data structure pointing at nums. Likewise, we do the exact same thing, except the only difference is that we see it with actual nums. And if we compare those outputs, they are exactly the same. In other words, we can reuse this transformation across these entirely different data types. And again, that would work the same if you had streams implement that implemented reduce and some sort of concat or conjoin. Uh, this would work for trees if you implemented reduce and uh, concat for trees. This would work for anything because mapping doesn't understand data structures. Filtering doesn't understand data structures, and what we and we give the transducer it's X form the instructions. Essentially, we give the the blueprint of how to work with this data structure to that transformation, and it just does whatever it's told. So if it's if it's told to add those numbers together, it just does that. And if it's told to concatenate them together, it just says, how do I concatenate them together? And concatenate takes care of it. So it doesn't know how, these data is, how this data is structured, so it, can't, it can use the same transformation, the same transduction for all these different data structures. And I have one more example down here. Same thing as above, except instead of adding, we will just return that new data structure. So seed it with data structure dot of, gives us the initial value. Concatenate, remember, data structure has a dot concat method. Concat just calls data structure dot concat. Same tr uh, transducer as before. Seed it with new nums. And same thing down here, except instead of the initial value being data structure dot of, so the initial data structure, we see it with the initial value of an empty array because this is instead going to be working with nums, which is an array. And we get the exact same thing because down here I'm calling dot value just to make it a little easier to read, but that's the actual output. Okay. So those are transducers. And again, uh, you can get this code from a gist in the description box below. Recommend following it along. I'm just going to explain once more how the flow of data actually works in this. So if the composition isn't clear enough, what's going to happen is when we call uh, the dot reduce, so I'm just trying to look for where this is going to be easiest to point to. I'm just gonna have to jump around. So when we call dot reduce inside of transduce, I'll do this up here where the actual transducers are created. So when reduce receives this transducer, this X form, it's going to one by one feed the numbers into this transducer. And so it's going to receive a, uh, first it's going to receive mapping and mapping is going to say, I have this transformation, apply ag1 as a transformation to that single number. And then that transform number that is, went from one to two is going to be passed to filtering. That'll be used to check if it is even. If it passes, which it will, it'll be passed to double it. Then it'll be passed to ag1. And then it's going to be passed to whatever our uh, reducing function was. So whether that was concat 
with an initial value or add with an initial value, it's going to be combined with that initial value. And then we go back up to the nums array and get the second value. And that's going to be passed through to mapping. We'll increment it, check if it's even, it won't be. So then that will fail, it just won't be passed into our array. And it won't, or whatever the data structure is, it won't be concatenated. And then we'll go back up for the next value. And so three, we'll increment it by one, it'll be four, it'll pass, the is even check, it'll be doubled, we'll add one, and the resulting value will be passed to our reducing function. It now has an accumulator with a value of an array of one element, which will have the resulting transformation from that first one that was passed through. And it'll just concatenate the new transformed value onto that array. And it'll keep doing that until the entire uh, nums array has been reduced using this transducer. So I'll link you to a uh, good visualization for this. There's an article on Medium that has a really good visualization of how one value is passed through the entire transducer process. And then the next values pass through the entire transducer and then the next value and the next value and so on. But I think an illustration will probably make that a bit clearer. So hopefully this taught you what transducers are. If you still have questions, leave them down below. My apologies if anything was unclear. Uh, I will answer any questions that you have in the, in the comments. So leave them. And if you're wondering why I have semicolons, that's because I'm using prettier. It's also why everything's formatted in this way. So I mean, if I do this and then I save, it's going to run prettier and it'll fix things, hypothetically. There we go. And it adds semicolons. And it also puts my function parentheses really close to my function keyword, which is irritating because it makes it difficult to use with standard, <laughs> which is the linter I would like to be using. Uh, and I can turn off semicolons, I just haven't, because I was using Airbnb linter for a while. But uh, yeah, if you're wondering, that's why. You probably weren't. Anyway, leave your comments. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.